Here we go, turn that camera around. All right, so we're gonna welcome back some folks. I'm pretty sure I need you guys to be looking. Instagram guys, I need you to be looking on Facebook and let me know what's up, what's up. What's up? Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy. I'm not gonna go back through all that. But I do wanna know that Facebook is up and going. So just as soon as you Instagrammers can let me know. Okay, Aaron says it is better. Listen, your purpose is not your position. Your purpose is not your provision, but your purpose is what you pursue. Your purpose is what you pursue. Your purpose is what you pursue. We all pursue God as followers of Jesus. We all pursue his love and loving him. We all pursue, you know, serving God. But our purpose is pursuing God's calling or God's will on our life. We pursue God's calling or God's will on our lives. Obviously pursue God. You obviously pursue, you know, his love and you pursue loving him and you pursue serving him. But our purpose, come on, hashtag purpose and hashtag pursuit, our purpose is what we pursue. Acts chapter 13, verse 36. How many of you have ever felt like you kind of met your challenges? You kind of did what you set out to do. Maybe your pursuit or you felt like your purpose was to graduate high school, then you graduate, and then you ask the question, what's next? How many of you have ever asked the question, what's next? I've already accomplished that. Maybe your pursuit was, I'm going to get married. I want to have a family. And you get married, and you think, well, what's next? And it's that what's next that is constantly out there in front of us, drawing us toward it. And then we think, well, we're going to have children. And we have children. And we think, you know, what's next? And then you raise your children, and then your children leave home, and you think, oh, no, what's next? Have you ever gotten to a place in your life where what you were pursuing, you have accomplished, and then you're in that position of, what's next? Maybe it was your career. Maybe it was some goals that you set in mind. Hashtag goals. How many of you have set goals, accomplished those goals, and then you felt like, what's my purpose now? I thought my purpose was to be, you know, an attorney, and now you are. I thought my purpose was to be a wife, and now you have been for some time. Or your purpose was to be a husband, and now you have been for some time. Or your purpose was to be a parent, and, and now you're a parent, but they don't need you like they used to need you. And maybe you thought your purpose was to build something or to do something, and you've accomplished those things, and now you're wondering, well, what's my purpose? What's next? If you haven't felt like that, come here, come here, come here. If you haven't felt like you're no longer challenged, if you haven't felt like the best years are behind you, if you haven't felt like, you know, I've accomplished what I set out to do, what's next, I'm just kind of living until I die, my life is outrun, my purpose, I have more life than I had purpose. If you haven't felt that yet, you will, okay? Acts chapter 13, verse 36. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, this is King David, when David had served God's purpose, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. And he was buried with his ancestors. Guys, when David had accomplished his purpose was when God took him home. So if you're still listening to me, if you have breath, if you have ears to hear, I want you to know that you're not finished yet. And even though you feel like you've Accomplish the things that you were, you know, pursuing, the things you were desiring, the things you wanted to do with your life, and now you feel like you're in this place where the best is behind, the challenge is over, and you're kind of bored. How many of you have ever been kind of bored? I mean, you just have kind of settled into a spot. Hashtag bored. David served the purpose of God for his generation, but there was a time when David messed up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. David made a mistake. David blew it. David, David almost missed his part of his destiny because of something he did. And I want to share with that, that with you today. 
David forgot to continue to seek his purpose. Let me say this another way. Do you know why David messed up? Do you know why David found his way into Bathsheba's arms? Do you know why David found his way into murdering or having his friend murdered because of Bathsheba? Do you know why David lost this child? Do you know why David went through all of this and this, this turmoil that would mess up really the rest of his life in some areas of his life? Do you know why David messed up? He quit pursuing his purpose. He quit pursuing his purpose. Today I want to help you understand that. 2 Chronicles chapter 11 verse, I mean, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. I want to help you see how David messed up. David messed up by stop or quitting pursuing his purpose. If you quit pursuing your purpose, you will mess up bad. I want to warn you. I want to beware you. I want to make you aware that when you stop, when you feel like the best is behind you, when you feel like you're unchallenged, when you feel like you're bored, when you feel like you've set out and accomplished all you set out to accomplish, or you've given up on the things you couldn't or the things you didn't, there's danger, danger, danger when you quit pursuing your purpose. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Let me show you where David made his mistake. And stopped pursuing his purpose. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab. That David sent Joab. David is king. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings, David is a king, go out to battle, that David sent. David didn't go out. Hashtag go out. David sent. David didn't do it. David sent someone else to do what he was called to do, what his purpose was. He sent someone out to fulfill his purpose. It's kind of like when you say, I hope God will send somebody to do that. Man, somebody needs to do something about that. When it's the spring of the year, David was supposed to go out to war, but he sent Joab and all of Israel. Verse 2. Then it happened one evening, evening that David arose from his bed and walked out on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to look at. David would have never seen Bathsheba had he been where he was supposed to be when he was supposed to be there. It's not just doing what you're supposed to do. It's doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. It was the springtime of the year. Kings were to go out to war. He sent out Joab. He finds himself in a place where he should not have been doing what he should not do because he wasn't walking in his purpose. He felt like he'd already accomplished everything and now someone else can do it. I've already, you know, killed Goliath. I've already become a king. I've already set up Jerusalem. I've already set up the kingdom of God. I've already done all these things, and I'm just going to lay back now and let somebody else do it. I'm going to quit pursuing. I'm going to quit being passionate. I'm going to quit going out. I'm going to stay back and let somebody else go do it. Had David been pursuing and walking in his purpose, he would have never seen Bathsheba. I want you to listen to what his son Solomon says when he becomes king. Listen to me, when you're going through a transition in your life, beware. When you're changing seasons in your life, beware. The transition is coming from David to Solomon as king. Solomon, beware. What did your father do? What did your father not do? Learn from his victories and learn more from his mistakes. On that night, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, on that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what shall I give you? What did Solomon ask for? All of you are going to say wisdom who grew up in Sunday school. But maybe you don't know what wisdom is. Hashtag wisdom. He didn't just ask for wisdom. Solomon was extremely specific in what he asked for. I'm about to become king. There's a transition from my father David. 
I want to do what's right for the people. I want to lead them well. There's a transition time. My father met all of these challenges. What's for me to do? On that night, God appears to David's son Solomon and said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, Listen to specifically what Solomon said to God. You have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. God, you have set me in a king's place. I need to know what to do and when to do it. My father, when he was pursuing, when he was passionate, when he felt like he had a purpose, he was on it. When and how and what. But God, I saw times in my father's life where he wasn't passionate, he wasn't pursuing, and he made some of the biggest mistakes in his life when he got bored, when he felt unchallenged. When he felt like there was nothing left to do. So God, what do I ask of you? And you, you, God, you just said that I can have anything that I ask. Solomon says to God, you've shown great mercy to my father David, making me king in his place. Now, O oh Lord, let your promise to David, my father, be established. For you have made me king over a people like dust and the earth in multitude. Here's what he asked for. Now give me wisdom and knowledge. That I may go out and that I may come in. Now it was the spring of the year. It was the spring of the year that 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1 said. It was the spring of the year. It was time for kings to go out. It was time for people to fulfill their purpose. It was time for people to be passionate. It was time for people to pursue. And David sent Solomon saw his father do that. He saw that mistake inform his life. Solomon's mother, guess who his mama was? As Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to my father David. You have made me king. Now give me wisdom that I may know how to go out and how to come in. Solomon wanted to know, where am I supposed to be? When am I supposed to be there? God, don't let me get bored. Don't let me feel unchallenged. I need wisdom. Not to stop, not to sit, not to soak, not to saturate in contentment and boredom. I don't want to get to a place where I feel like I've accomplished everything. Give me wisdom that I may go out and come in before this people. Woo! It's a very dangerous thing to transition seasons in your life because we're all transitioning seasons. It's a very dangerous thing to transition seasons in your life Without going to God and asking what's next. Everybody hashtag what's next. And if you're so young that this hasn't affected you yet, it will. And I'm giving you wisdom beyond your years. So that when you get to those places in your life, the Holy Spirit can remind you. If, if you're too young and you're thinking, well, this isn't me, I'm in no crisis, I'm not bored, I've got the whole world in front of me, I've got so many things to come. You're going to get to a place where you feel like that you've accomplished the things. The best years are behind. You're unchallenged and you're bored. When you get to those places, don't stop pursuing God. Don't stop pursuing passionately your purpose because it's very dangerous. It's a dangerous thing to transition seasons in your life without going to God and asking what's next. You've accomplished the, person, the purpose of a season. Maybe you've accomplished the purpose of a season. You've served your country. You've raised your children. You've had a career. But you've only accomplished the purpose of a season. There are seasons to come. You're transitioning. There's more ahead of you. Don't stop. Don't quit. Never, ever, ever stop. Always consider and ask God what's next. We sometimes call it midlife crises. And you know, some people think that you can only have one midlife crisis at midlife. You can have multiple midlife crises throughout your life when you feel like you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. But listen, midlife crises are not crises. Would you put that as things come and go? They are not crises. They are changes in your seasons. And what do you do when you're transitioning? 
What do you do when you feel unchallenged? What do you do when you feel bored? Do you just sit back and think, oh, them were the good old days, and that was the golden years, and oh, life was better than back then. And, uh, and, but when you were going through it, it was hell. But now you look back and think, oh, I wish I still was that. I wish I was still there. I wish I still do that. But while you were there and doing it, you're like, oh, this, this is hell. I hate this. I mean, God. But now you're looking back and think, well, they needed me. They wanted me. I was important. I was identified by what I was doing. I was a father. I was a mother. I was an employee. I was a CEO. I was a manager. I was a director. I was a, you know, all these things. It's not a crisis. It's a change in your season. And you can have several. You will feel very little purpose because you've accomplished what you had set out to do and you don't think there's any more left. Listen, if you haven't gotten there, you will. You can be serving God but feeling like you can't accomplish any more of where you are. Listen to me. You can be serving God and feel like you just can't accomplish any more where you are. And something that used to be so passionate to you now, you have to drum up energy just to do it. It's because seasons are changing. When you no longer feel challenged, your season is changing. So real quick, let me tell you how to pursue your purpose when you feel like, you know, there's no more purpose. Prayer. Habakkuk. i got to hurry. Habakkuk chapter 2, 1 through 3. Habakkuk says, I will stand to my watch. I will set myself on the watchtower and watch to see what God will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. And the Lord answered to me and said, write the vision now. In other words, stand where you are. Stand your guard. Go up to the watchtower and pray. And when you pray, take a tablet and take a pen. Listen to me. This, 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 this is not some hocus pocus. I'm telling you, get yourself a tablet, get yourself a pen, and go implore and seek God. Pray, ask God, what's next? And start writing. Why? For the vision is yet for a appointed time, but it, in the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. The answer will come. The challenge will come. The purpose will come for you to pursue. Let me tell you my purpose real quick as I close out this morning. My purpose is to bring people near to God. My purpose is to bring people near to God. My purpose is to bring people near and introduce them to God and remove obstacles that separate them. My purpose is to draw people near to God introduce them to God and remove obstacles between them and God. Now, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to let you go. Never confuse goals with your purpose. Just because you've accomplished some goals does not mean you fulfilled your purpose. Let's go back to the first Acts chapter 13. When David had served God's purpose, in his own generation, he fell asleep and was buried among his ancestors. I'll come back to a little bit more about this tomorrow. Sorry about the technical difficulties earlier. But just because you feel bored, and just because you feel unchallenged, and just because you feel like you've set out and accomplished some goals, does not mean you fulfilled your purpose. There's more. How do you respond to this? You go up on the watchtower. You pray and you ask and you implore God. God, teach me how to come out and how to go in. God, give me wisdom that my purpose is bigger than goals. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person listening, every person watching, that you will fill them with the knowledge of who you are, what you have available for them, and that you would stomp out depression, oppression, boredom, and a sense of purposelessness, a sense of hopelessness, a sense that they're no longer useful. Father, I pray that you would draw them into your prayer uh, place where you can conversate with them and that they would write down what you have to say. There's more to come. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag share, put out the page. Bye, everybody. Love you. Again, I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties. Not sure what happened. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Now it is near and 
so I face the final curtain. I've lived a life that's full, and if you've stayed, here's some Elvis. I've lived a life that's full, I've traveled each and every highway, oh and more, much more than this, I'm going to do it God's way. Ashley, don't be telling any Elvis stories out there, I love you guys, see you later, bye.